and welcome to Cut the Cord to Cable, a YouTube video produced by the Twinsburg Public Library. My name is Carrie. My name is Sam. And we're here to tell you a little bit about how to save some money by potentially ditching your DVR slash cable box slash all those channels that normally come in through the TV and relying on internet, library resources, and some other streaming services and antennas to help you get access to all of your favorite content. So we get a lot of questions about whether it's worth it to cut the cord. We get a lot of questions on social media and we also get a lot of questions here in the library. So we're hoping that this video will help you make this decision. If you have further questions after watching the video, you are very welcome to stop into the library and we will help you further. So, we're talking about cutting the cord. Mel Gibson seems pretty unhappy in that slide. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, it is not just, oh, I'm going to call the cable company and get my bill erased. It is, you still need to have some sort of way of delivering the content to your television. So if you will be watching, we'll talk about some different options on how you watch people consume content in very different ways in this day and age. But you have to think about a lot of different factors before you decide to go forward with this. So are you, Sam, are you a cord cutter? Yeah, I am. Um, I haven't had cable TV in many, many years now, just despite my internet provider wanting me to very much badly, very badly. Uh, very but, true. Yeah, but I, yeah, I haven't. I've relied mainly on streaming services since I want to say at least 2011, 12 ish, right around there. So one misconception I think that people have now that this topic is getting into the mainstream is that all they have to do is turn off their cable and they, and it will be just that easy that they can just stream everything. And so you've chosen the streaming services that meet your needs. Mm -hmm, that's true. And every family will be different. So <laughs> yep. why don't we talk a little bit about that? So we actually have a handy dandy worksheet here at the library that will help you decide, which I believe you created, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, and there's also a cord cutting calculator online that you just type in cord cutting calculator into Google and it should be one of the first res results. There are actually a few of them, but the one that I like is from, and I'm not going to remember the name of the, the company that published it. It's like Slate or something. Okay. Yeah. I want to say it's Slate. It's a website. But if you search for cord cutting calculator, you can come up with that and then you should also stop by and grab a, a worksheet. So of course you'll want to write down how much are you currently paying? What are you paying for? Do you have DVR? Do you have multiple boxes in your house? Do you use the internet a lot? Do you stream anything now? So if you're not familiar with the concept of streaming, that is watching content or listening to content that comes in through the internet rather than over the air, over television. And I will say that, <clears throat> you know, I did not do any of that. When I first cut the cord to cable, um, I kind of just went in blind because I got <laughs> tired. I didn't want to pay for, you know, mm -hmm. it was too much to pay for. Uh, T you know, cable TV services, so I went in real blind and I kind of wish I would have, looking back, I wish I would have done something like this because I have, over the years, probably spent more money than I would have wanted to in this endeavor. It's still, I'd say it's still it's worth it, but yeah, definitely doing the, the legwork helps, I would say. Tapping into different types of streaming services yeah. and deciding which ones. So when I first cut the cord back in 2005, I we didn't have streaming services, so <laughs> I relied on my antenna, which we'll talk about, and then I also checked out DVDs from the library. Mm -hmm. So you can still do that 
we'll talk about that. The, the library also does have some streaming options for you now as well. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to our second point is what do you want to watch? And when do you like to watch it? Do you like to watch it when it's on TV? Like at the moment it's broadcast, you have to see the, the latest episode of your favorite show. Or if you're really into sports, do you have to see that game when it's on? I've heard that there are some people who DVR sports games and they like to rewatch them, but I've I'm not one well. of them. Yeah, neither <laughs> am I, so. <laughs> so. So is that, that's a consideration. We'll talk about live streaming services versus streaming that you can watch on demand. A lot of people these days are into the fact that there's no commercials yeah, on streaming nice. service. <laughs> I like that part. And um, so it really just depends. In my house, we watch a lot of kids TV because we have kids. It's just whatever happens to be on Cartoon Network and Nick Jr. And all of our other content is watched asynchronously, so not when it's on. Because we don't have time to watch things when they're on. Uh, we don't watch a lot of television in our house, and that, that's another thing, too. If you don't watch a lot of TV, you might be able to get away with just using library resources to mm -hmm. replace your cable. And then that brings us to the final point, what kind of television programs... We'll talk about the different services and what they have. All right, so we've got some options. Yeah, so starting out here, there's a, of the, you have, I mean, there are more options than this, but these are probably the most popular ones. Um, obtaining a uh, HD antenna. Um, you can, and like as Carrie was talking about earlier, streaming from um, your computer which would be watching all your content on your computer screen. Um, some people prefer that. I know I did prefer that, mainly out of necessity for a while, because mm -hmm. all I had to with my name was a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, or getting a hold of a streaming device, which is much easier nowadays than it was even maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, so we should explain what a streaming device is for people who may not understand that. All right, so a streaming device is a hunk of plastic, essentially, <laughs> that you plug into the back of your TV and it connects to your to, uh, connects to your internet through your Wi-Fi um, or your wireless network and it they usually have some sort of interface where you download a bunch of apps just like you would on a smartphone and those apps are different services that offer different content stuff like Netflix, Hulu, um, Acorn TV, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the um, Amazon Prime Video, stuff like that um, uh, it is worth noting, though, that if you happen to have a, what, uh, a smart TV, those in and of themselves are kind of like smart devices. Your TV, mm -hmm. if it can connect, if your TV itself can connect to the internet, then you probably have access to some of the stuff already. And you may not even need to purchase a, a streaming device. Yeah, the different brands are Roku. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name that the Alexa thing. Oh, the Fire Stick. Kindle Fire Stick. Yeah. Amazon Fire Stick. Amazon has so many things, I yeah. can't keep track of them all. And, um, and the nice thing is. Podcast, that kind of thing. Well, the nice thing is, if you do have a smart TV, it ends up saving you 50, 60 bucks, whatever mm -hmm. they cost. Although with Black Friday sales yeah, and stuff that's like true. that, you that's do common. tend to. Yeah, you do tend to. Oh, we just dated this podcast. Oh, <laughs> this, no. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. It, you can get them cheaper during big sales. I know Amazon loves to sell their own products, so mm -hmm. they will massively discount stuff around the holidays. Um, and we, we actually got a Fire Stick because we were streaming through our Wii U, mm -hmm. and Wii U discontinued support for the Prime channel. Oof. So Kindle said you can have $25 towards a new Fire Stick, and then there was a sale, so we got a $5 fire stick did i say it was free it was not free it was five dollars well that that brings up a good point though if you if you have a video game console or if you have grandkids mm -hmm. or kids who have grand game consoles those in of itself at least the newer ones tend to act as streaming devices as well uh most of right. our content that we view um we i have a playstation 4 at home and my my wife and i we do a lot of our streaming through that and we just do netflix hulu a couple other uh, services 
through the PlayStation 4. Yeah, and we used the Wii U for many years. It's just that if you're not familiar with gaming consoles, the Wii U has now been superseded by the Switch. So we do also have a Switch, but for some reason we were really partial to that Wii U. We still use it quite a bit, <laughs> even though we can't stream on it anymore. We use it for games, and we still use it for YouTube a little bit. But it's a fun little console. Like yeah, the there's a lot of good games for it, so... Um, one other thing to note is that if you do not want to, if you just, if you're sticking with just internet from a cable provider, you may also have the option of installing an app for the cable provider mm -hmm. on your smart device and paying less for the cable content without having a box. So a lot of people just do, um, they do that. They just have the internet and then they can subscribe to channels kind of like sling tv which we'll talk about those different yeah. possibilities i think uh because spectrum's the big one here and what's the what's spectrum streaming service i forget the name of it so do i um i should know it they try to I sell really it to me should. <laughs> i really should come up with it i know that their big thing right now if i want to date this podcast further is that they're coming out with their own content they've got spectrum news now which they really? always makes me laugh because i think it's a feel like i'm watching fake like a fake video fake fake <laughs> like, fake news video like a, on a on like youtube or something yeah, like, like on a, a program like, or like um uh, like on a uh, like saturday night yeah Live saturday night Live, something. Something like that. it's funny okay let's see what's coming up next oh yeah so this is i don't really know a lot about the antenna because like i said the last time i cut the cord was in 2005 so <laughs> I just had you know little rabbit ears on my TV <laughs> so um, but I I used an antenna for quite a few years I don't anymore but mainly because we don't watch a whole lot of TV because I'm a I'm a college student so I don't have I have no free time at all mm -hmm. but when I was using an antenna which still was a few years ago but still right around when I cut the cord, so 2012 ish. Um, and they've only gotten better since then. Uh, but there are a couple of things you want to consider when you get an HD antenna. And why would you want one in the first place? Well, because you can't get everything with the streaming services. Mm -hmm. um, and that's slowly changing as streaming services start offering more and more, but for a while and still kind of now, certain things you can't get would be like, local news channels, um, some sports stuff. There's some uh, like nationally broadcasted networks that you can pick up with an uh, antenna. Okay. Um, so the reason, like the main reason we got it, antenna when we cut the cord was, uh, we really liked watching a TV show. I think it was Once Upon a Time when it oh, first yeah. came out. So to date that. Um, that was a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we really liked watching that TV show uh, so, but it was only broadcast on I think ABC or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was on ABC because it was Disney. Yeah. yeah, and we couldn't find it online or anything, or we needed to like sign in with a cable provider, mm -hmm. which we didn't have. But we're able to pick up the local ABC broadcast, which happened to broadcast that show when it came out. So hey, those are the types of situations in which an HD antenna might or an antenna might be beneficial for you. Um, a couple things to consider is whether or not you want an indoor or an outdoor antenna. Um, the main differences between these two are ease of use and uh, price point. Indoor antennas, fairly inexpensive. They're pretty cheap. You can probably pick one up for about 20 or 30 bucks from Walmart. Um, they are easy to install. You just kind of hook up into the back of your TV. The catch is they are not nearly as powerful mm -hmm. as the outdoor antennas. Um, and sometimes uh, you see, uh, like on the old uh, TV shows, when you mm -hmm. see the cartoon character like messing with the bunny ears, you don't have to do the bunny ears, but you still kind of mm -hmm. sometimes have to mess with the antenna. Um, the one we had was just like a flat piece of black plastic. Mm -hmm. And depending what we wanted to watch, we'd have to like rotate the the, <laughs> the plastic block <laughs> block around, be like, okay, cool, we're getting that one now. And That's then something, yeah. My when I was growing up, we grew up in the middle of nowhere, and we had a gigantic 
antenna on the roof, and mm-hmm. then every time there was a storm, my dad would have to climb up on the roof and move it back so that we could get our TV. Oh yeah, so segueing into outdoor antennas, that and therein lies some of the complications mm-hmm. of outdoor antennas because you do have to install it uh, sometimes on the roof. It really depends on your location. Um, something you can put on the roof, or you can get some that you stick in your lawn, but that has its own complex issues, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. if you have neighbors who don't like big things in your lawn. <laughs> um, uh, and they can be they can be a little more powerful and pick up some more stuff, but you do kind of have to jump through a few more hoops. Yeah, for um, sure. And if if you don't want to get up and climb on the roof, or if you don't know anybody who can climb on, on your roof, then you might want to think about the indoor kind of options. Yeah, um, my father-in-law, he said when they bought their house and they moved in, there was this like this huge tower type thing erected in the backyard. And kind of like looking at it like, what, what is this? And why, why does this look like it's gonna fall down? Because oh, it was no. all rusted. And he's like, is that, that's a satellite dish, or that's an antenna. Up there. Oh, okay, so they're probably trying to get, um, you know, they're trying to get TV mm-hmm. signals because they were in the, they're in the middle of nowhere as mm-hmm. well. So they had to like really elevate the uh, antenna to get a hold of some of those signals, yeah. signals, which is why you might want to consider the different levels of amplification. Okay. Well, I say different levels, there's two. Uh, <laughs> amplified versus non-amplified. Indeed. So I don't know the specifics of it, and in all honesty, you really don't have to. But essentially, the amplified just is, produces a stronger signal, so it can try to pick up more stuff uh, or more channels that are being, uh, you know, crossing your uh, the path of the antenna or around your house. Um, you the main difference there is price point amplified are a bit more expensive than mm-hmm. non amplified. You can also get omnidirectional antenna. You see that more often with the outdoor ones, where you just kind of, you don't have to mess with it. You just kind of put it out and it picks up whatever it can. Mm. Um, which that would the, be good. Yeah, they are nice. They are a little bit more expensive. Um, we found, I, there was one we found looking around that was several hundred dollars, and I mm. said no, because mm-hmm. <laughs> cheap college, or broke college student, but. <laughs> and again, it just does depend on what you watch if you're only watching it for this one show whereas if you rely on the local news and maybe you watch a lot of local news or you just watch one channel all day long some people like to do that Mm -hmm. my grandmother the home shopping club my grandmother as well Mm -hmm. so and um it the another big consideration with antennas is you may not be able to even you just you might even be able to pick up some of that local stuff because of where your house is situated and if you're a, a like in a valley or something you may not be even be able to pick up those local channels That's even true. if your neighbors could down the road um the, on the screen here on this slide you should see a website called antennaweb.org if you type in your house's address or just your general location um when we do this class in person, I usually type in just Twinsburg's zip code. It can sh- you'll see a whole bunch of different lines like shoot across the map. <laughs> it's kind of cool, but it will show you which channels you can have access to um, on different different rated bands. I think we have a slide. Oh, we do. Yes. Oh, this is, is this is what it looks like. So if you're watching the YouTube portion of this, or if you're watching the not audio video video portion of this video (laughs) i'm tired yeah but yeah if you're watching the video here um this is what it's gonna kind of look like what's on the screen right now um so you will see the different channels that you get access to and there's all these different colors those are different i believe they're called bands just different uh radio bands that you can access and different antenna will be able to access different bands it differs so much um the when you go to buy an antenna if you choose to go that route on the box it will tell you what bands it has access to i think i think they're color-coded okay. in this way across the board that's just the general way that everything everyone ca- uh, each of these produ- uh, people who make these things categorize it so i mean in this image is a little old but you can see that if you were in if your house was in the middle of twinsburg here in the middle of that 
the little park and the circle, you'd have access to uh, all of these channels. Oh, on here. Yeah. in the red section. In the red section, yes. <laughs> but I think they got some blue and orange going on too. Maybe that might be purple. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I would definitely check that out. Yeah. Cool. Antenna is nice. It just it can be finicky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you understand that for local channels, you need to get an antenna. And you've already made your list of all of the channels that you like to watch. So now you can stream, right? Kind of. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, a little bit. Yes, you can, but maybe. <coughs> so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this slide right here because it's important to kind of know the gist, but you don't need to know the nitty-gritty stuff. You can if you want, but um, that's, a, that's a video for another day. Um, so you have to realize that when you go to stream, you have to have a certain internet speed. This, this problem isn't so much a problem these days, but you can, because most internet providers tend to sell you, they know people are streaming um, and watching videos. So they, will, they tend to keep their base packages at a level which supports streaming, mm -hmm. but they do sell packages on a lower end, so if you're paying dirt cheap internet, um, you may not be able to do streaming just yet. So the speed of your internet is measured in mega byte, megabits. Megabits per mega, second. I mix those two up all the time. Megabits per second. I mix them up too. Yeah. Um, they're usually measured in uh, with downstream and upstream. All you really need to know there is the downstream is what's important for streaming, um, and you need at least uh, I believe it's at least 15 megabits per second on each device that's streaming. So you kind of have to divide that up. Think of it like a highway, and the more devices you've connected to the, your internet, the more cars on there, and the more cars on that highway, the slower everything's going to go. So that's a place where situations would differ. Yeah. Because you have just the two of you in your home, when I have four and I might be streaming, and one of my kids might be streaming, and my husband might be streaming, so I might need a higher internet speed than you do. Mm -hmm. And even then, even if it's just the two of us, it could be, you know, I could be watching something on the couch, but my phone is also connected to our internet. That's and true. And then my tablet, and then both of our computers are connected to our internet. Mm -hmm. So that's even though they're not doing that much, adding that much traffic, it's still traffic being added. They're all just connected. Yeah, they're all just connected, so it's siphoning your speed just a little bit. Um, so it's usually if you just ask your internet provider, hey, I want to start streaming, uh, what speed do I need? They're usually pretty good about telling you uh, the different levels that they offer which you, that support streaming. I think uh, most of them are, uh, we have Spectrum at home in their base $50 a month package was is like a 100 gigabits per second or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's more pretty than high now. Yeah, so usually the baselines you are more than enough, but it's still something you should probably keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are, let's say, one of you is online gaming and the other one is streaming, is will the quality of what's coming through the stream, will that change? Only if you start maxing out how much Magic maxing out your, your data speed. Mm -hmm. If there's more than enough, then you perfectly fine. But if, say, we have a 15 gigabit limit and we're getting close to there, one of those things, if not both of them, are going to start to suffer a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, you're thinking about you're thinking about how many devices you're thinking who's watching TV mm -hmm. and then another thing to think about is if you have multiple TVs in the home I often have people ask me this do I need four streaming devices yes you do mm -hmm. so yeah think of it like you need multiple VCRs or DVRs for each single TV in the home mm -hmm. um, just because the way that the screen there's only they, they can't broadcast on multiple things unfortunately right. we're not there yet we might be in the future <laughs> who knows but, but it is kind of cool like we have a projector at home so we can take our roku out of the tv and plug it into the back hdmi port of mm -hmm. the projector and stream it's they're portable unless Very you have portable. a smart tv then that's about as portable as the tv you. gets yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, um, the, the best thing about the, the Rogus and stuff and all the streaming devices is they're very portable. You can move it from room to room fairly easy because mm-hmm. it's typically a cord that plugs into the wall. You plug it in the TV and you carry the remote with you. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And if you lose the remote, you can download one on your phone. That's right. I forgot that we did that. Because I have no idea where either my Roku or my <laughs> Kindle Fire Stick remote is. So. All right. So now we're going to talk about those streaming services. And so you'll want to refer back to that list of things that you like to watch. And we've got a couple of different slides here that we'll talk about these. Mm-hmm. So like Carrie said, you want to consider what you want to watch, what you'd like to watch. Um, so say if you like to watch like uh I can't use Game of Thrones anymore because they're, they're yeah, done. Yeah, it's done. Uh, that was my go-to. But so if you like to watch um, a t- like a serialized TV show as it comes out, streaming well, nowadays it's a little bit easier, but it's it's something that you may not have access to right away. So companies like our services like Netflix and Hulu, they tend to release um, shows in batches, mm-hmm. usually in the form of a season. Um, like for instance, I was watch. I got. I was really into the TV show The Flash about the superhero The Flash because I'm a nerd. Um, and so when the new season would start to air on live TV, they would upload all the the previous year's season to Netflix. Mm-hmm. I'd watch that, and I'd wait a year to watch the next season. Yeah. So it's a bit of a delayed, um, the delayed wait time on some of these things. So if you're one of those people who likes to know, like, hey, I've want to talk about what happened on The Walking Dead last Saturday. It's so, it was so cool. And you're like, oh, I didn't watch it because it's not up yet. Right. You may have to consider going with some of the more expensive live service options, and which we'll talk about in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, now, price, again, it's the... And again, we'll talk about this in a minute, too, because things are starting to change with streaming services. But prices will differ. A lot of the different streaming services... Um, are priced differently to they try to compete with each other um they are a little they, they you know they're they are smaller increments you know like netflix is nine eight or nine dollars now um hulu's eight but keep in mind you want to be able to they, they will add up as you add more and more right the more you have and now we have content that's exclusively streaming so mm-hmm. you cannot watch it unless you purchase it even if you've already paid the hundred something dollars a month for cable yeah. so that's a little frustrating um luckily the library does have rokus that you can borrow and the content that is on those rokus is purchased by the library so when you take one of those Roku's home, you have access to all the content that the library has purchased. So that can get a little bit confusing to wrap your head around to, Mm -hmm. you know, if I have a subscription, so I might have a subscription to Hulu and Amazon Prime at home, but I don't want to pay the $6.99 a month for CBS All Access, but I really want to watch Star Trek. I really want to watch the new Picard show. I could check out the Roku from the library that has it, but then I'd have to take my Roku off and put the library's Roku Mm -hmm. on. So I know that can get confusing for some people. So it's like, okay, you've got the streaming that basically gives you a license to watch something, and then you've also got, you can download the, you're not really downloading the content, you're downloading the right to watch the yeah. content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, so confusing. Yes. Um, but one thing to consider with this is um, these streaming services are pretty open with how you use their account and so much you, they tell you not to share your account, but you totally can. Mm-hmm. So what happens in our home is um, I have two younger brothers and this is how we've kind of handled the Netflix subscription for many years. We tend to trade off who's paying for it oh. every few years or so. That's so I started out paying for it. Then my younger brother, he's like, hey, I think you've been paying for it enough. Um, you, want, you want me to take care of it? I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. So I gave him the email account, email account and password that I used to sign up for the, net, the Netflix account. He just signed in and changed the um, payment information. Wow. So that charges his credit card, uh, you know, every couple, you know, every month that charges his card. Um, and then we kind of do that 
with a lot of things. I have a friend, we share a, um, a streaming account to watch anime because we're both nerds like that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, there's nothing really stopping you from doing that as long as the person that you're sharing that account formation with, you, you trust. So if it's like family members, then go for it, you know? That makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, you wouldn't want someone to have access to your account who can just take your credit card. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. It's like, I'm sharing my uh, Netflix with Bob down the street, you know. And then you go, oh, wait, why is there a big charge on my own? Mm. Why, is, why is Amazon billing me for $200? Mm. Mm. Bob, what did you do? What did you do? <laughs> Bob has moved to Mexico. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, but... Like we said, the library is a good way for you to try out some of those shows, check mm -hmm. out the Roku for a week, and see what you think. And then if you like the service and you want to either buy it for yourself or share it with your friend or Bob, then you can do that. Yeah. So, um, One more th quick thing to talk about here is, and we kind of touched upon it earlier. Simultaneous yeah, streaming. Si simultaneous streams. So that basically means that Say, me and my two younger brothers, we are all watching Netflix at the same time. That's what is, we're using a si three simultaneous streams together at once. Now, due to various technical issues, or technical reasons, not issues, um, sort of different services will limit how many simultaneous streams you can have going at the same time. Um, so this happened a couple years ago where my brother asked me, hey, my friend Kyle, he really needs, you know, he really wants to have access to Netflix and he can't afford it. Do you mind if, you know, we share it with him? I'm like, that's fine. I know Kyle. He's a cool dude. He's not going to do he's anything. He's not going to steal your credit card. Yeah, he's not going to move to Mexico with a $2,000 <laughs> charge on my card. And so we, I gave it out to him. They're, they're always, they're, we're all using it. So me, me and my two brothers... Kyle, and I think my dad was using it at the time, too. Uh, so that's five so streams. So you have more than four. Yeah, so we have five people using it, and I go, um, I wake up one morning before work, and I go to watch something, and just go, wait, why is, Netflix is telling me no, what do you mean, Netflix? How dare you? I pay you money, give me my, give me my content. But they're like, no, you have five, you know, you can't have more than four simultaneous streams with this level of account. Now, if you upgrade the account to 13 bucks a month, mm -hmm. you can have up to like eight simultaneous streams or whatever the number was. So I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever, because I knew it was gonna, I knew that option was gonna come up again. Mm -hmm. But that's something to consider, and then every service is gonna be a little different. Um, they'll have different levels, or they right. just might pay. You know, uh, they might just say no. You can only do it up you to four times. One. You can have yeah. one, or you can only have four simultaneous streams at all. And, if, you know, if you want to have more, well, tough luck. That's all we can offer you. I think that CBS is only one, because I had a friend who said she would share hers, but she said you can't turn it on at 8 o'clock on Sunday when the new episode <laughs> drops. <laughs> so that's kind mm -hmm. of funny. Okay, so I did mention earlier that... <clears throat> Streaming services are starting to change, and they are. A lot of entertainment companies are starting to realize that people want to stream. A lot of people are jumping the ship, cutting the cord. Um, kind of like what we, when we talked about earlier about the cable company, how they start, they're starting to have their own streaming services. Mm -hmm. This is kind of why, too. So they, we're starting to see an emergence of companies creating their own streaming services. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this may even lead to them pulling content from other services that was previously uh, available there. So Disney Plus, it just came out November 16th, I believe. Or so. It came out early November this year. Again, dating this <laughs> video here. We'll have to do this again next year to update it. Oh, yeah. Because this has already changed since yeah. the first time I taught it. There was not nearly... There was not as much exclusive streaming content, and mm -hmm. then there was not as much, as you mentioned earlier, cross-pollination between yeah. the different companies and networks. Yeah. So Disney Plus, they you know they own Disney owns the all the Marvel movies, um, the entire all those movies, and so when they started their own streaming service. Netflix had a bunch of Marvel of the Marvel hero movies on there. They and just they're pulled. All gone. They're all gone. You can't go on and watch the Avengers on Netflix anymore, 
or you might, depending what their license is like. I haven't looked at Netflix at all this month because busy. But uh, you know, most of that stuff you have to find on Disney Plus now, which means that's kind of locked behind another paywall. If you're paying yeah. for Netflix now, you have to. If you want that content, now you have to get Netflix and Disney Plus. And with these very and how much the prices vary because a lot of these services have multiple levels like Disney Plus has you know two levels where you get just Disney Plus or Disney Plus Plus uh, Plus Plus uh, Disney Plus Hulu and ESPN right that and that so that's more money so everything starts to stack up and add up and this kind of go calls back to why we at the beginning here worked to we wanted you to think about what you watch and what kind of content you'd like to watch and how much you're kind of willing to spend because I hate to say it but sometimes it's actually it might even be cheaper to stick with your cable company that is true yeah. for some people it is cheaper it, it really is it just depends it really just depends like with our in our situation we if we were to go to straight up no cable we would have we'd need to use some kind of broadcast television streaming service such as Sling TV or Hulu uh, Hulu TV or YouTube TV. That is something that's been kind of new too since when we first started teaching this class. There wasn't a whole lot of that live TV experience mm -hmm. available, but we know we need to have that for our kids who watch just whatever's on Nick Jr. But other than that, since we don't really watch a whole lot of other stuff, we might not need to pay for a whole lot of other stuff. We might be able to just rent the DVDs from the library or purchase, you know, thing per thing from Amazon because if we have a Prime subscription because we get the free shipping. So we've got a lot of content on Prime that we can either rent or um, buy mm -hmm. or just watch for free because it's part of Prime. So if you're not familiar with all of these streaming services, See, I am because I have to be because I work here. But if you're not, it can seem very overwhelming because mm -hmm. you don't know where exactly will you get these things. So yeah. we'll, we've got a slide on that, too. Yeah. Of course, it's not comprehensive because but, there's so many. There's, there's no way <laughs> for um, it to be comprehensive. But one thing you can do is that if you fill out that worksheet and then you come here and meet with one of us or someone else in our department who's knowledgeable, we can go over and say, okay, so here are some of your options. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that yeah. slide, <laughs> going to it. Um, so like Carrie said, this is not comprehensive and there's a couple things I wanna to touch on um, mm -hmm. here in this slide. Specifically, I wanna to touch on the live services because that's still yeah. kind of new and it's evolving every day. Um, so uh, starting, uh, say even two years ago, Two or three years ago you didn't if you wanted to watch live tv you were stuck pretty much with the antenna or still buying a uh, package from your cable company mm -hmm. but now because a lot of these entertainment companies have had noticed that need they've switched to offering that as a, a service so i know hulu and uh youtube and a couple other ones they have um various names for it but uh Hulu is this, uh, Hulu plus Hulu TV <laughs> or something yeah. like that. It's it's very on the nose, um, and YouTube's is called YouTube TV. And what they are are services that you're kind of paying that company. So in this case, like if you're paying Hulu to basically broadcast those live signals into your home, and it may be live in quotation marks because it may be a day or two behind. It just depends on what the contracts say about that and all that. But that's business talk that we don't need to get into. Um, but keep in mind, those tend to get a bit expensive. So with Hulu Plus TV, instead of being seven to twelve dollars, it uh, I think it's like thirty or forty for that. It does. Um, it adds up, and Sling is similar. And so is PlayStation TV or right, PlayStation View, right. PlayStation View mm -hmm. or Sony View. That's what it's called. Um, right, and then there's also Spectrum now has that option too. Mm -hmm. So it that'll help you cut your cable bill a little bit while still getting some live content. Yeah, um, but the nice thing about that is it's pretty much guaranteed. Unlike the antenna, where you kind of you may or may not get it depending on the mm -hmm. weather, or if you mm -hmm. want to get up and you know mess with the antenna, and that's kind of something to consider if you 
aren't able to get up and move around all that easily. Because I know sometimes I'm I'm young, but sometimes I don't feel like getting up. I don't want to get on the yeah. roof. Yeah, I don't want to get on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Or even you know when we had the indoor TV, if I had a long day at work. The last thing I wanted to do was turn it on and go, all right, to get, get back up. up and and mess with this. Of course, that was a very physical job at that time. Yeah. But still, you know, it, that's something to consider. So you may not want that hassle. So maybe paying a little bit higher fee for that service might be worth it to you. Mm-hmm. For the for that savings on the cable box and yeah. the there may be a rental fee for the cable box and all of those oh, little yeah. things that add up. And all the in the installation fee for the mm-hmm. people coming out to install the, the stuff on hook it all up in case you don't want to mess with that because right I like to mess with it but I'm a little bit crazy so <laughs> I like messing with it yeah. too but I I think there's a breed of person that we are that <laughs> likes to mess with technology <laughs> and equipment. Uh, the no. another thing we should mention which is not super new, this has been kind of going on for a while, is that a lot of these channels do have their own original content. Mm -hmm. Uh, We did mention CBS All Access doing that. Also, uh, Hulu has a lot of original content, Netflix. Netflix, yeah. And Amazon Prime also. Mm -hmm. Which kind of leads into what all these changes we're seeing in the landscape now as far as streaming goes. Some of these companies like Netflix, they have to offer original content because they got all the other content they're offering is being pulled away. Right. So a lot of these, all of these different companies are offering their own original com- content in order to get you to come and, you know, pay the money to view it. Right. And you see this where people are paying, they'll go and they'll pay for Netflix for three months so that they can binge watch. That's really where binge watching came from, Mm -hmm. is from this streaming phenomenon. We did this earlier this year. We watched, there was a uh, dramatized Chernobyl show on on HBO. And Mm -hmm. so we signed up for the HBO Now free trial. It was a week. We binged all of it in a week. Then we said, nope, canceled that. (laughs) And and that was it. So... Um, you can kind of get away with that. There's nothing stopping you from doing no, that. The, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And exactly, if you can yeah. wait, I know I've, you're going to you're gonna laugh because I keep bringing this up, but if there's a show that you want to watch and you can wait for it to come to DVD, then you can borrow it. Now mm-hmm. some of these channels are not... Like, I haven't seen the DVD for Discovery yet, but who knows? Maybe there is one. Well, it's hard I mean, to say. Like Netflix, they have an original series called Stranger Things. It's really popular. Oh, and that took forever. To uh, yes, but now they are releasing it on DVD. Mm-hmm. In fact, they started releasing the, se- the the seasons much quicker now. I think they realize people want to own it in their yeah. home. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. people, it's a different sense of owning something when you have a physical item versus having the ebook or the e-movie mm-hmm. on your Roku. Yeah. <laughs> so... One more thing I wanted to mention about this is that the more of these services that come out and the more of these TV channels that or these TV programs that start coming up is this trend of doing a la carte. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, okay, Spectrum is going to give you this package of 25 channels and you're going to pay $15 a month for it, you can now say, I want Cartoon Network, HGTV, you know, you can actually pick and choose the channels. And that is a trend that's coming directly from the telecommunications companies. So we'll probably start seeing more of that. We'll probably start seeing like Hulu and Netflix maybe even pairing up and being like, Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I mean, really, you start be like, yeah. Okay, well, if you buy Hulu, Hulu, Netflix Plus, you get access to. Well, I mean, we we have seen that. So Disney Plus, right? So they they have two levels that you can pay for. One is like eight bucks, I think, where it's just Disney Plus, so you get all of Disney's programs. But the next level up, which is I believe thirteen dollars at the time of recording, anyways, um, it gives you Disney Plus, so all that content, plus ESPN Plus, which is you know ESPN streaming service. That way, that's an option to you know for life sports and all that. On top of that, you do get access to Hulu as well. I believe Hulu. Um, mm-hmm. So it's you get whole three of these services kind of combined into one. And I think Carrie's right was we're gonna. I, I think it's my theory that uh, we're gonna start seeing that more and more happening. Maybe with different companies offering services of packages, 
or even just services just splitting up different stuff. Yeah, you know? as a la carte and just picking and choosing the things that you want. So by doing this workshop with us, by sitting down and really thinking about what you want, you'll be able to be a more thoughtful consumer of media. Yeah. All right, so we've got one more slide. Yeah. And we have talked about this a little bit, so maybe it won't be you know, long. too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've talked about the types of devices that that uh, you have access to, the Kindle Fire Stick, the Roku. There are multiple different kinds of Roku. Mm -hmm. So just deciding which one is right for you, depending on how much you stream and what some of them have more memory than others right yeah um so I'll, the, the you would worry about the memory because the apps that you download in order to access the streaming services like netflix hulu mm -hmm. discovery channel all that kind of different stuff they take up memory on there some of them have more memory than others and with roku they have three different lines of streaming devices right. where it's the main difference is the amount of memory <clears throat> it has it has a slightly better hardware so it runs a little smoother okay and it hooks up a little bit differently because there's like a box there's a mini box and there's a stick for right. Roku. so right. it, it gets kind of confusing and if you have any questions let us know because <laughs> we were confused too at first don't worry but when we went to go buy them yeah Ugh. so we do have roku sticks here at the library i Hudson Library may have the boxes, the little boxes. I think they have someone something. accidentally yeah. returned one here once, and we were like, what is this? They, they have but, something. I know they do. I yeah, but them. we have the sticks. They're easier to circulate, and you can come and check one out and try it. Chromecasts, in the past, you had to have some kind of Android device to, I, to make them work. I think you do, or they're getting a little bit more standalone. Um, I think they need to compete with the other people yeah. who don't require that. Yeah, and they, I think they, they tend to cater to a little bit more tech-savvy crowd, yeah. too. Um, they don't really advertise a whole lot for Chromecast. They um, were one of the first ones. Yeah, yeah. So early adopt as early adopters, mm -hmm. good for them, but I think they've kind of stepped back from the, on their marketing game. Yeah. Well, that's fair. And, it, and back in the day, I remember... 2007 I was mm -hmm. working here and <laughs> my friend who now lives in PA was working here too and she told me about this new thing called Hulu where you can watch TV shows on the computer and we were like whoa <laughs> so if you missed Saturday Night Live you could just go on, a, on your laptop we didn't have we didn't have any of this stuff mm -hmm. back in my day um but you would that's what you would use is you would use your computer to stream stuff and then as stuff got more i remember being sick one one time and just watching that web show the guild mm -hmm. you know off of the website so streaming isn't just through these services it's also on just straight up on the internet youtube mm -hmm. things like yeah, that yeah yeah that little known company called youtube <laughs> uh that that's essentially streaming as well um the, you're streaming right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> As we laugh at our own bad jokes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> if you made it this far. Yeah. So that's... Uh, so your computer can, in fact, act, you, you stream on your computer as well. So you can do a lot of this web, uh, web content viewing on a computer. I know a lot of my uh, entertainment content, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube. Because... Yeah partially have no life but um My kids do that too mm -hmm. there is a lot of free content on youtube there and is. some of it is questionable but there's mm -hmm. not there's a lot of stuff that's legit yeah like uh tutorials on how to fix parts in your car mm -hmm. i've done that a lot oh yeah uh, um, how to use the e-check kiosk mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how to you know cooking videos and mm -hmm. stuff like that um, so YouTube, there, there's a bunch of free, uh, nice free content out there. There's other streaming video sites other than YouTube that I'm struggling to mm -hmm. think of right now. I think, I don't know, I think Vimeo, Vimeo, Vimeo might still be around. Yeah. yeah. YouTube's for the big one though. Um, uh, real quick, another 
big name in the game that isn't as big as it was was Apple TV, mm-hmm. which is a streaming device made by Apple. Uh, I don't really hear much about it. I think the people who want it buy it, and the people who don't want it mm-hmm. don't buy it, and Apple's okay with that. <laughs> One interesting thing about Apple TV, since we've already dated this podcast, is that they're now starting to come out with original content. Are too. they really? Okay. And I'm going... I am not buying an Apple TV to, just so I can see the show, but I do kind of want to see the show. So mm. I will be looking again for some kind of library content that I can borrow. And speaking of that, I would be also remiss. I've mentioned the DVDs a lot, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we do also have streaming services through the library. So we have Hoopla, which is our main source of streaming content. You can borrow up to 15 things a month for free. And they do now have a Roku app, so we need to update our PowerPoint. That's true. They and do. we also have something called Acorn TV, which a lot of people really like. You get a pa- you borrow a pass, and then you can watch unlimited television or movies for a week. Mm-hmm. So you get it's British television. Yeah. And to maybe uh, touch on that a little bit, by pass, it's an electronic pass, so you don't have to. Like, yeah grab anything from the library or anything like that. You just kind of sign up with your library card. Yeah, you go to your web, our website. And yeah. we have a certain number of passes. So if we run out of passes, then you're out of luck. But if you're lucky and you get one of those passes, then you can just watch, you know, I've had people borrow it and watch 50 things in a week. Yeah, and those passes, yeah, the passes last a week. So if all else fails, you don't get it and you can try it again in Come a couple days yeah yeah the pa- the number resets every month yeah just like hoopla so in hoopla if you run out of your borrows if you can't get a pass for acorn just mark your calendar for the first of the month i hoopla will even send you emails like today hoopla, I ha- yeah they sent me an email yesterday mm-hmm. saying hey you have 20 you still titles have borrows so, yeah, left I'm don't forget like, so uh, i have it thank you yeah uh, <laughs> but they've got some it used to be that people would say, oh, Hoopla doesn't really have the content that I want. They've getting more robust They're content. getting more. They're getting a lot more stuff. And we will be adding more services like this as time goes on. And we're always adding new streaming content to our Rokus as well. So mm-hmm. we'll be adding Disney Plus here pretty soon. And then whatever else comes down the pipeline, we'll, we'll be on top of it. Yeah. And as always, with all these different devices, too just to circle back for this last point, Consumer Reports is a good place to go mm-hmm. to for reviews because I believe that even this picture is dated because yeah. I think pretty sure one or two of these devices aren't even produced anymore. Yeah. But that but this picture is only a year old or something right. like that. So technology it changes moves so fast. Quickly. Yeah. We do have subscriptions to consumer reports here, both in print and digital. And if you are the audiobook type you know, an audiobook streaming type, we can also show you how to get those on your phone, mobile device. That's what I am. I love audiobooks. Me so. too. Okay. All right. So I believe we've reached the end. So mm-hmm. if you have more questions, you know where to find us. Yes. We are more than happy to answer almost any question that you can throw at us about this. Um, we even offer one-on-one coaching sessions. Um, so you can always make call in and make an appointment. Um, we will try our best to answer all the questions that you have. Um, yep, we try to run this yeah. class live a few times a year or two, and we'll try to keep it updated online as well. Yep. All right. All right. See you later. Have a good night. <laughs>